Ladies and gentlemen, welcome at the scheduling seminar. And today we will have a talk by Michel Gendro. He is from the Department of Mathematical and Industrial Engineering. He is full professor at the Polytechnic Montreal in Canada. And uh, I know him for his uh, inventions in vehicle routing, namely, and he works extensively in logistics and I think also in energy, energy optimization. But I think if I am right, he did his PhD in scheduling, right? No, so, no, no, I did my, <laughs> something that most people don't know. I did my, uh, my master thesis and my PhD on equilibrium modeling of transportation systems. I see, okay. But you where, have also... I have pub where I have published very, very, very little. But you have quite a long list of publications related to scheduling, right? I do, I do have some publications in scheduling. Okay, so today he will speak about uh, vehicle routing, uh, but uh, since we will speak about time windows, it will be very closely related to scheduling. And I am happy to have a very good speaker from our neighboring community. So please go ahead. Thank you, Zanek, uh, if I pronounce correctly. And uh, let me share my screen. So um, no, I'm not sharing the right thing. Yeah, here. I, yeah, yes, we here we are. Okay. Um, Do you see my screen? No, oh, we see we see some uh, some something else. Huh? Now let me let me try this again. So you have um, to properly choose. Uh, I, th I think I clicked. Yeah, I clicked the wrong window. Yes, that's it. That was my problem. Yeah, that's that's now okay. Okay, now, so let me, let me go back to the title. So this is a talk about some work that we did uh, developing a timeshare, a uh, table search, not a timesharing, a uh, table search uh, method for uh, vehicle routing with time windows, but on road networks. And as you will see, uh, the reason I chose mm. Uh, this topic is, as was said before, because this is uh, close to scheduling and very often uh, v uh, VRPs with time windows are considered to be uh, vehicle routing and scheduling problems. And uh, so this is, uh, this is the connection. So uh, before we get started, I would like to uh, make a number of acknowledgements. First and foremost, to Mag Mira, who's a former PhD student. In fact, what you will see was uh, developed uh, as part of her PhD dissertation. So she used to be a student in Polytechnique Montréal. Now she is back in Morocco at Euromed University of Fès. This was work that was also supervised uh, together with my colleague Jean-Yves Potvin of the uh, University of Montreal and Andrea Ledy, who was in Polytechnic Mon uh, Montreal, is still, uh, uh, still uh, part of Polytechnic Montreal, but now has a chair in Cornell University. So that's the, the outline of the talk. Um, because I thought that most people would not be that familiar with uh, vehicle uh, routing, I decided to, to do some kind of, a, I would say, long-winded introduction so that you could catch really uh, the context in which this work was uh, developed and what were the objectives. So it's... Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, time-dependent uh, general introduction and time-dependent VRPTW, then the version on road networks. Then I will just state exactly what were our objectives in this project. Uh, 
And then I'll go with the more technical part of the presentation. So specifying formally the problem that we're addressing, the solution approach, uh, something which is very important in this context, which is a framework for constant time evaluation of, uh, of moves, and then some computational experiment results and conclusion and perspectives. So the introduction. So for those of you who are not uh, familiar with vehicle routing, the first VRP paper is usually traced back to Denzig and Ramser. So yes, George Denzig is again involved in something important uh, in a paper which was called the truck dispatching problem back in 1959. I believe it is one of the most studied problems in logistics, if not the most studied problem in logistics, when you look at all variants. Uh, when I was editor-in-chief of transportation science, sometimes when I was looking at the volume of papers on different topics, I felt that we could almost have considered uh, changing the name of the journal to the vehicle routing journal because easily uh, 40, 45% of submissions could be traced to vehicle routing problems. I think that this has a bit uh, decreased now, but is still extremely active. So the basic problem is uh, quite simple to describe. We have, it involves just delivering some quantities of uh, mythical products to a given set of known customers using a fleet of vehicles with limited capacities. And we will define this formally a bit later. And the objective is just to try to determine a set of minimum cost routes that allows us to satisfy customer demands. Uh, over time, there's been a whole family of variants of these problems involving different types of constraints or different types of parameters. Uh, for example, uh, we've seen the introduction of travel and service times and then constraints related to route duration or time windows, as we see, we'll see later. Uh, existence of multiple depot, multiple types of vehicles, so-called heterogeneous vehicle routing problems, problems where, <coughs> uh, in fact, products have to be, some products have to be delivered, others have to be picked up, uh, also stochastic versions. So for those who have been following uh, what I've been doing recently, uh, you would know that, for example, stochastic vehicle routing is my pet problem. This is, uh, as I often mention, if I was forced to work on just one problem, that would be it. So uh, let's go to VRP with time windows. So one name which stands out is that of Marius Solomon, who did his PhD dissertation on the problem, who introduced a number of algorithms, but also uh, maybe I would say, in a sense, it's a bit ridiculous, but maybe most importantly, has introduced a set of benchmark problems that have been widely used by the community to uh, test, evaluate, and compare solution methods for VRPTW. So here, the difference with the, the standard problem that was described by Danzig and Ramser is that each customer has to be visited within some kind of time interval. So we're given a window, earliest service time, latest service time, during which the service at a customer should start. And uh, we normally, I say normally, because there are some applications where this is not allowed, normally 
vehicles are allowed to wait at customer locations if they arrive before their earliest service time. And uh, because of the, the time dimension, this is where this whole concept of vehicle routing and scheduling comes up. So the scheduling part is just trying to decide when each customer should be served. As far as I know, this is the variant of the VRP that has received the most attention. I think that there are hundreds, if not thousands of papers that have been devoted to vehicle routing with time windows. Now, uh, some interesting uh, distinctions. There's a, a body of literature that deals with problem with soft time windows, that is, time windows in those problems may be violated at some penalty cost versus other problems where you have hard time windows, so time windows that are strict and any solution not succeeding to make the time window of each customer is infeasible. There is also some a small body of work on problems with multiple time windows that allow, for example, of visiting some store maybe in the morning or in the afternoon if you have, uh, if for example, the location would close for lunchtime. Uh, but in fact, this is not extremely common and uh, it does make solving the problem significantly more difficult. Uh, obviously, as I was mentioning, this is one of the most studied problem in logistics. So as you can imagine, there's been a whole host of solution methods that have been proposed to, uh, to tackle this problem. This goes from very simple heuristics, for example, insertion heuristics. So one of the contribution of the Solomon 19, 1987 paper that I was mentioning is uh, some insertion heuristics, then uh, local search methods, and, uh, and then the whole, I would say the whole gamut of meta heuristics, uh, starting with uh, taboo search back in the, I think the first, probably the first application of taboo search to BRPTW must be in the 19, early 1990s. Um, adaptive large neighborhood search, famous papers by, for example, Hopkin, Pissinger, genetic algorithms, um, hybrid genetic search. There's a paper by my former student, uh, Thibaut Vidal, among others. And also exact methods. So um, VRPs with time windows have been, uh, I would say, a, a darling problem of, uh, of uh, methods based on common generation and branch and price. And one of the reasons for this is that having time windows restrict the feasible space and make it easier for exact methods to solve than, for example, uh, general VRP, which can be quite hard to deal with. And uh, here I think I made a uh, I made a typo because I just wrote branch and price twice and obviously I didn't mean to write branch and price twice. Then they are also uh, methods that would use other kind of uh, methods like uh, branch and cut, but really branch and price is, is the method for, I would say the exact, uh, oh yeah, I know what I wanted to write. It was branch and price and cut. I forgot that and cut. So the state of the art, the state of the art in in uh, exact methods for uh, uh, VRP time window is branch and price and cut method. So where you just inject all kind of valid inequalities on top of the standard branch and price machinery. 
So let's talk a little bit about time dependent VRP TW now. Uh, okay, what, why, <coughs> where does the interest for time dependent vehicle routing problems come from? Well, it comes from the fact that lots of VRP applications are uh, encountered in urban environments, which means that uh, travel times between locations may vary wildly because of uh, traffic congestion and related phenomena. And uh, so this has kind of, uh, um, there are many issues related to this. One of them might be just that, for example, if we use to compute uh, routing plans, well, they may turn out to be infeasible in practice because the um, because the uh, sorry for the phone ringing. Okay, it's, this is because in fact we may end up traveling in some part of the cities in heavy congested times and therefore travel times will be much longer than what has been planned. So if we have time windows to meet or things like that, this will fail. Also, there's there's one this there is this feasibility issue. There are also, I would say, optimality issues in a sense that if you know that there's gonna be different um, there's going to be variation in travel times. You may wish just to take advantage of the periods of time in which travel times are shorter to visit some areas in the city, and therefore you would get more efficient routes. So it's it, it's both this combination of feasibility and optimality considerations that really uh, push towards time dependent VR, uh, vehicle routing. So um, there's been there's been different approaches to model travel time variations. One of the first paper to to look at time dependent routing was a, a paper by Malandraki and Daskin. In fact, uh, Tracy Malandraki did her PhD dissertation on this topic, as far as I remember. And uh, what they were looking at was a time dependent VRP, but without time windows. And what they were doing is they were dividing the planning horizon, let's say a day, into a number of intervals. And they would just assume that travel times over each interval would be constant. Now, this approach as a big problem is that it does not satisfy the so-called FIFO property, first in, first out. Sometimes it's more advantageous to delay departure from a location to get to the next time slot. So for example, I am at the customer location at, 5.55 p.m., which is uh, close to the end of, let's say, the busy uh, time slot of late afternoon. If I wait five minutes to start traveling towards my next destination, my travel time will drop by, say, 10 minutes. So I'm better off waiting five minutes because I'm gonna be saving 10 minutes. Obviously, this doesn't make much sense. So this is completely counterintuitive, and it has uh, it has been uh, seen as a, a source of aggravation by by many people. So what is the solution in that case? Um, it turns out that uh, a bit more than twenty years ago. Uh, Jean-Yves Padvin and I had a PhD student, Sumia Ishua, who was uh, doing her PhD on 
PRPTW. And in one of the contribution of, of her dissertation, <coughs> we, uh, she uh, <coughs> addressed time dependency issues. So the problem at hand was a time dependent VRP with soft time windows. And uh, the idea there was to divide the planning horizon in intervals over which travel speeds, not travel times, travel speeds would be constant. And this so-called IGP model does satisfy the FIFO property. And you should, it's always advantageous to depart from the location at which you are as early as possible. Furthermore, <coughs> in this paper, it, uh, the, the application case in the paper was quite simple. It was a hypothetical city with, <coughs> uh, it was a three by three grid in which uh, customer locations were picked. And the, uh, it was a three time slot day. So, and, uh, but still it was possible to, to show that having traveled, uh, accounting for a travel time variation was uh, extremely important in terms of the routing plans that were produced. So I would say that this was some kind of proof of concept in a way. So here is a little diagram that uh, illustrates the IGP model. So typically you have this travel speed function. So you suppose that you have uh, fairly, you have this speed of one, so nominal speed up until five o'clock in the morning. Then you have a congestion from between five and 7.30, and then speed goes up to quite a good speed later on, and back in, in the afternoon. So this, is the, so this is a kind of typical pattern. When you apply this to the travel time for a given arc, what you will get is you do not get a succession of of uh, constant time segments, you get a piecewise linear segment, a piecewise linear function. So the, um, what you have is that if you have a long period over which travel time is, uh, travel speed is constant, then you get a, you get a flat part, but you have those, um, I would say, slope part, which correspond to change changes in the in the travel speed. So that as you are traveling, as you are traveling, as you are going from crossing the border of those uh, time intervals, at first the travel time will start increasing or decreasing depending on whether you're going to a faster or slower uh, travel speed until, until this thing hits this kind of flat part. So, so basically we have those piecewise linear functions for travel time. Um, it seems uh, uh, it's always it's always a bit delicate to talk about one's own work and uh, to to say two good things about it. But as far as I know, this IGP model has been the most often used in the time dependent VRP literature. So we have here a number of uh, uh, of references, for example, 
papers by Donati, and I think those people, they were doing ant colony optimization, if I remember correctly, and Filiozzi also, a model in which it were both hard and soft time windows, and Debia and friends who did the Nixac solution methods. And basically, if you want to, to have some kind of overview of this, uh, there's this survey paper co-authored with uh, my Italian friend Gian Paolo Ghiani and Emanuele Guerriero, 2015. And um, maybe I can give you a scoop. Uh, we are currently revising this. So we should have a new survey out sometime in probably 2022, maybe 2023. Obviously, this uh, IGP model has not been the only model that has been proposed to model time dependency. There's a pair of papers by Hageny and Jung where they were using continuous tra travel time functions with special uh, conditions to ensure uh, the FIFO property. And uh, one of the, the the conditions that you need to ensure FIFO property is that when you have, uh, it has to do with the, the slope of the, the slope of the travel time, is that the travel time slope should not be smaller than minus one. Then, um, it's also a very nice paper by Bernard Fleischmann and some co-authors who proposed a general framework for time-dependent VRP. Um, sometimes I suspect that had it not been for, I mean, the popularity of the IGP model, maybe this is this is what what would have occupied the space. But uh, so this is a this is a nice reference. So this pretty much covers, I would say, the standard work on time-dependent VRP. So let's continue and try to see what are the issues with this. Well, the papers that I talked about up to now, they, they look at the problem from a customer to customer, or I mean, depot to customer uh, view. We just assume, we just look at a graph where basically all the nodes are the customer nodes and the depot. And basically arcs in this graph represent shortest paths. Shortest paths with respect to what? Very often shortest paths with respect to distance or shortest path with respect to travel, to nominal travel times. So we have, between each pair of customers, we have an, uh, an arc that actually represent some path on the network. When we are building the time dependent version of this, what we're looking at, we're looking at the variations of travel time over this path. But if you, if you think about it a little bit, you will understand that in many cases, the, one of the critical things when you're looking at traveling in a city at different times uh, in the day, well, one will not always use the same path. The, there will be paths that will be much better in, I would say, uncongested situations. And that may become pretty bad when there is congestion where you, one would naturally seek to use an alternate path. So when we are trying to optimize with respect to travel time, it's not just a matter of time, it's also a matter of what path is used. So to be, 
I would say, to be realistic and to be practical, what we should do is we should be considering multiple paths between locations. And there are basically two ways of doing this. And uh, even though I'm gonna present those things as two fairly separate directions, maybe if you think, if you pay a little bit of attention to what I will be presenting later, you will see that those, those views are not so far apart one from the other. Option is just to stick with the good old customer to customer graph. And basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna just consider several paths between pairs of nodes. So paths that are determined by some kind of rule or algorithm. And then those, the travel times on each of those arcs, uh, when it, here I said with a set of paths, yes, it's a set of paths identified between any pair of customers, but those are arcs. So each of those paths correspond to an arc. So it's a multigraph. Or the other option is to just, could we work directly with the underlying road network? And, and, and then what happens is basically travel time functions are just defined on the road segment by road segment uh, basis. So if we try to illustrate this, we would have, on the left, this kind of multigraph representation. So we have those directed arcs that correspond to different possible paths. Each arc between two nodes correspond to a path. And when I have three arcs between two nodes, this is because I have three, three paths that seem of interest. Or we can just have a road network graph where we have two types of uh, vertices. We have the customer nodes that are here in black. And then we have other intersections that are in black. And we just try to define our solutions on, on that basis. There has been significant amount, well, significant, not that huge, because I think I probably have here pretty much all the papers that deal with this. So people defining time-dependent vehicle routing problems on multigraphs. So some work by uh, friends in uh, France on the dial a ride application. Then Wang and Li, who were looking at a time-dependent VRP with time windows. Then another paper dealing with, uh, this is time-dependent VRP with, we could see some kind of competing channel. So not necessarily modeling exactly what I have mentioned, but mathematically it has the same structure. Um, paper by Leigh Kaliskan de Mirag and Jenny Lund on time constraint heterogeneous VRP. And then uh, another paper from France with uh, Ben Tisha, Epsi, Feye, and Kio, where they were doing time dependent VRP TW. So those are the papers that were exploiting this kind of multi-graph representation. Then if we look at time-dependent VRPs defined directly on road networks, it's a fairly 
Well, fairly old. A, a paper that goes back to 2014 by Simona Mancini about, and this is an application in the city of Torino where she's solving a just a time dependent VRP TW with two categories of arc. So all the main roads have a have time dependent travel speeds while uh, there is also a network of smaller streets where it is assumed that uh, travel speed is constant. Then um, paper by Wang Cao, Van Wensel and Gross, where they look at the time dependent PRP with what they call path flexibility and this also, there is also a stochastic dimension in this problem. And then more work by the French group of Bentisha, because in fact, the first reference is Bentisha's dissertation. And, uh, and then there's a paper that was published in 2019, again, with Tom Van Wensel as a co-author where they develop a branch and price for the time dependent VRPTW. So that's, that's pretty much uh, the point where we, where we picked up the state of the art. In fact, to be quite honest, uh, the, what I'm presenting to you is, um, is some is part of the project that was initiated, I would say, uh, before uh, was initiated before 2017. So basically, it's a it's it's a multi-part uh, project in which first we wanted to to use uh, machine learning techniques to develop uh, travel speed patterns for a complete city derived from empirical data and then develop a new algorithm and, and then look at uh, some kind of real-time version. So maybe I should just go directly to our objectives. So our objectives was basically what we wanted to do. We wanted obviously to advance the state of knowledge on time de dependent VRP. And in a sense, I think I must confess that somehow what we wanted to do was to revisit what we had done in, in, Ishua, in the Ishua paper of 2003. So if I remember when we started discussing this project with Jean-Yves Podvin, it, it was this idea that yes, we should just, it would be, it's kind of 15 years later, we should just, uh, we need to update, we need to update this and bring it uh, to uh, recent developments. And in particular, this whole idea of trying to develop speed profiles using uh, empirical data instead of just postulating uh, some kind of uh, travel speed form, and then really trying to head toward the, the real time part of this. Uh, there were all, also clearly practical objectives, one of which was to, to optimize delivery routes in urban settings, uh, also wanting to produce more realistic delivery routes. We were interested in being able to solve large problems. So this is why, for example, the type of, uh, we didn't want to go, for example, the, to follow what uh, Ben Tisha and co-authors had done uh, in developing an exact method. So we did not even consider exact methods. And, and as I said, we were concerned about uh, some kind of real-time issues. In fact, in, uh, in Magmira's dissertation there, this is 
the second paper and there's a third paper and the third paper is about exploiting this in a dynamic routing context. So let me now switch to, so this is the, this is pretty much, I would say the, a long introduction to, uh, to the work that we did. And now I will just go over the technical side of things and starting with uh, the problem description. And I must, I must acknowledge Maha for providing me with those slides. I, I was lazy, I decided not to redo uh, the slides that Ma had given me. I decided just to use them directly because I thought they, they were doing a fine job. Okay, so let's look, just, just look briefly at the time-dependent road network. And then we're gonna be talking about the time-dependent shortest path problem, which is kind of a key element in what we're doing here. And then the time-dependent VRPTW. So we suppose that we're given a road network which is represented as a directed graph. So where the, the vertices, some of these road junctions will be customer locations. Uh, we have a set of arcs, which are road segments. With each arc, we have a distance dij, a time dependent speed function vij so this is vij of t and then we have a cost also that we may associate with this so basically this time dependent shortest path problem is uh, can be defined we can define it recursively so basically we are just tracing you know, just following paths and updating the departure time from each location to the next, as you can see in the, can see in, for example, equation two, this is for the cost. And we have the similar thing for the travel time. And, and basically this can, this can be solved by a distra, a distra type algorithm it just we just need to we just start from one location and we just we just push labels as in a quite similarly to a dextra standard algorithm so the the time dependent vrp time window on road networks well it has uh pretty much the attributes that I discussed before. We have for each customer, we have a demand, we have a time window, we have a service time, we have a set of vehicles that must service customers between in their time windows, can wait, they start from the depot and they have uh, some given capacity. And the objective that we have selected. Now, this is important because if you look at different papers on time dependent routing, the objective is not always the same. And I know that I had extensive discussions with Dominique Feuillet regarding this. Uh, we thought that what we would like to minimize is total route duration. We want to minimize the work days of the drivers so that all customers must be served. Each, uh, each customer is served by a single vehicle. Each vehicle starts and ends at the depot. And we must uh, satisfy capacity and time window constraints. So the solution approach, as I said, we have at the 
as a foundation layer, a time-dependent dextra, and then we do table search. Okay, so what the key thing in this time-dependent dextra is just that we are labeling vertices as with the arrival time at those vertices, and we just process vertices. We just process the uh, vertices with non-permanent labels in order of arrival times. And we just extend labels using the speed function that corresponds to the arrival time at a node. So this is a, we, we, we have to use the, I would say, uh, we have to use the time dependent travel times, but basically it's, it's just the basic logic of Dijkstra's algorithm. So the idea here is just here is a small algorithm about how to compute the arrival time at a successor node. In fact, this was is something that was present in the Ishua paper of 2003. It just tells you, given a travel speed profile, how do you compute the arrival time at uh, a given node? So basically, you're looking at the distance that you have to cover, and you just uh, you start applying the current speed until either you arrive at destination or you reach the upper bound of the time interval, at which time you have partially traveled the arc and then you just keep moving, but at the other speed. So this is looks a bit complicated, but in fact, it's quite simple. So then we embed, we have this, and then we will just use a, a taboo search approach to, to solve the problem. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with taboo search, unfortunately, I don't have time to really go over uh, the, all the bells and whistles of taboo search, but just to say that in fact, taboo search is what just a fairly direct extension of local search. We're just applying local improvement from a current solution to try to find improved solution, but we allow eventually uh, deteriorating solutions. The important thing in the context here is that we want to, uh, to visit feasible solutions. So that one big issue that we have when we are looking at neighboring solutions is that we need to check feasibility. And the other thing, which is, well, the problem with taboo search, and I would say all, all methods based on neighborhood search is that we have to be able to explore uh, so-called neighboring solutions, a neighborhood of solutions in reasonable time. And here, uh, we try to do this in constant time. So the neighborhood structure is based on uh, the cross exchange. Um, for those who are not familiar with cross exchange, this is, uh, this is an operation in which we take two routes and we basically swap the middle parts of the route. So we just cut one piece in a route, one piece in another route, and then we, we switch them uh, here at the left and the right. And, uh, and this has proved very effective for uh, vehicle routing with time window problems. In general, this is something that was proposed in uh, papers uh, coming from uh, Montreal back in the 1990s, but I think it's been widely 
adopted now. And uh, what we do is that we explore this neighborhood in a systematic way. So we consider, well, here we say all possible exchanges of sequences, all possible exchanges of sequences up to some length. Obviously, we don't want, if we would have <clears throat> routes with 30 customers visited, we don't want to look at all the possible combination of uh, exchange, exchanging sequences between one and 30 customers between the two routes. Now, the, the, the key issue is trying to, to do this evaluation in constant time. Uh, we do have a taboo list with where we just uh, prevent the reversal of a move for a number of iterations. And we use a very standard aspiration criterion, which is revoking the taboo, state, uh, taboo status of an exchange if it leads to a better solution than the best known solution. Here we have developed a diversification strategy, which is a bit, uh, I would say, uncommon, uh, in that it relies not so much on a change of neighborhood, but rather on a uh, on a change of objective function. So when we have stagnation with our main objective, we switch. Uh, the objective to minimizing distance. And, uh, and we do this for a number of iterations and then we revert to the regular objective. Okay, so let me tell you just a few words about the constant time uh, evaluation framework. First thing, we uh, there is a big issue of feasibility and what we want to do is when we're looking at a pair of customers obviously there's a huge number of possible possible paths between those customers what we're going to do is we will identify a number of paths so we will just apply the time dependent dextra to those uh, to the pair of customers for different departure times. So for example, I'm gonna look at uh, time dependent shortest path if I leave at eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and so on. And then we will plot those things and compute the lower envelope of, the, of those paths, okay? So basically, what are we doing? So look at this, this picture here for different, for different departure time from a node I, I have different arrival times at my target node J. And I can compute those piecewise linear functions. And then I can just compute the lower envelope of those functions. So basically, what do I get? I get, I get the short, the time dependence shortest path among this restricted set of paths between customers, uh, between nodes I and J. And this is what we will be using in the algorithm. So we, we will not start recomputing shortest paths at the different times that we might be visiting customers. We're gonna compute this at the outset for each pair of location, customers and depots. And we will be using this structure to represent the optimal shortest path between those, uh, the time dependent optimal shortest path between those customers. So when I was mentioning earlier that there's a connection with the, uh, 
with the uh, multi-graph approach, you could say in a sense, well, in fact, if I'm looking at those different segments, those different segments, they, I could have maybe used just a multi-graph to represent this. Yes, but this is not the way it's done. And this is, uh, and this in fact works quite well. Okay, then we compute bounds on departure times and I'm looking at the time. So I think I must, I must kind of try to go fast. So we can compute bound on departure times from each node on a path to maintain feasibility. Okay. And, and then we can inject this in, uh, in the verification of a, of a possible cross exchange. So what we will do is we will use some approximation to determine this feasibility. And the key thing is for each vertex in a path, in a, in a route, okay? Now we're not, we're not looking at path, I'm looking at customers in a path, in a, in a route. So for each customer, what I'm concerned about is what will be the delay at the next customer for each minute of delay at customer I. And this way we're able, even though we may not have the exact formula, we're able to estimate the impact of any cross exchange that is propagated. So when I'm looking at, here I have the, the center. Okay, I want to know if this exchange is feasible. I have the left part, which is always feasible because it was already feasible. Now I will propagate exactly arrival times in the section, I would say the core section of the exchange. And when we get to the end of the routes, we will use the penalties to estimate the delays. When, we're, when we are evaluating a neighborhood, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep a fixed number of the best possible exchanges in the neighborhood based on the approximation that we have defined here. And then afterwards, we will estimate exactly the cost of those solutions. So now let me show you some test in instances. So here we have, uh, so those are instances that were produced by Bentisha. They are uh, graphs that have between 50 to 200 nodes. We have, five time periods. We have different types of uh, time, depend time dependent speed or travel times. And we have problems with narrow or wide time windows. Uh, then we did some parameter tuning. So for the taboo tenure, the number of iterations of the procedure, the number of uh, iterations before switching to diversification, and then the number of iterations in diversification. And here I'm gonna just to show you two things, two results. So results with respect to the optimality gap with respect to Bentisha and also the improvement from our initial solution. So here you see um, problems with first set of problems. You can see the running times are get more important as we have more customers. Uh, the branch and price sometimes has uh, problems, especially with strongly correlated problems. 
If you look at the gaps, you see that the gaps of the table search procedure are always below 1%, which means that this is quite close to optimality and we could discuss this later. Now, other set of instances. And uh, again, you see gaps that are within 1%. Now, if we look at what is the impact of diversification, well, you can see that diversification helps in a significant fashion. It's not, it's not big numbers, but it does help. And basically it has very little impact on running times. Same thing here with white time windows. And let me just go to some conclusions. So I think one of the main conclusions that we were very happy is that we were able to get uh, high quality solutions in reasonable times. We were uh, quite happy also about, of, about the constant time evaluation framework. And one of, all of this was done, as I mentioned earlier, with the goal of maybe integrating this in a dynamic environment to manage routes in real time. So in fact, we have a paper on this. Where does this lead us? It leads us to a number of questions. Uh, one of which is, uh, can this be connected with some kind of uh, ways of managing uncertainty? And how, what would be the best way maybe to extend what has been done there to, uh, to revise travel speeds in real time? And uh, what, if we're revising travel, spe uh, travel speeds in real time, uh, can we look at this maybe in some kind of Bayesian framework? Can we use machine learning? All of those things, I would say that there are a number of open questions. And I will just stop here and answer questions if there are any. Okay, Michel, thank you very much. And let me open the questions. Uh, I have uh, allowed you to unmute yourself. So please don't hesitate to ask your question directly or type your question in a chat, right? Please go ahead. Nobody asks a question, so let me let me start with with mine. So, scheduling and vehicle routing problems are not far away, right? So, if we consider a parallel identical processor problem with uh, sequence dependent uh, setup times, then this is exactly vehicle routing problem, if I am right. Uh, but uh, of course, we have to speak about criterion as well, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, sequence dependent, if you have sequence dependent setup times and things like that, we are pretty much in the same, in the same ball game. Yeah, category of problems, right? Yes, and, if you have parallel machines, it's... Uh, yeah, and then also, if we have a scheduling problem where we... Uh, have like um, our company or facilities on different locations, huh? then we have to deal with both problems at the same time. It's not maybe a vehicle routing problem, but it's some kind of delivery problem, which is part of part of part of the scheduling, right? So, 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 do you do you remember some of those uh, problems to be solved in your community where people go closer to, to scheduling as well? Uh, quite honestly, um, I must say it's. Uh, I don't, I couldn't answer you 
directly now about this. It's, uh... So, so to say, these problems are mostly treated like independently, right? Yes, yes. It's. Um... I'm not sure I understood your question correctly. Can you can you just ask the question again and maybe? Yeah. So, so imagine that you have like larger facility which is uh, on different locations, uh, and yes. uh, and then you have multiple. Uh, multiple uh, delivery problems inside your own company and then you do the schedule for for the wall for the wall facility uh, at once so so there is important travel time uh, which uh, you have to include in your scheduling solution for sure. example um, and maybe you have to also group some some transport uh, some transports to to efficiently use uh, uh, mm -hmm. your, let's say, internal uh, internal logistics of your company and so on, so. Yes, yes, well, in fact, we're working on, on different types of problems that have, I would say that in a sense connect to this. Uh, I have, a, I just uh, submitted an abstract uh, yesterday for some kind of uh, production routing problem. So basically those issues of trying to connect production issues and routing. Then there are issues about consolidation, working on some other project where basically what we're doing is we are picking up uh, picking up requests from customers, then batching them on some kind of long distance transportation mean and then delivering them at the other end. Mm -hmm. So coordinating the local and long-term delivery, but in the long-term delivery, we have this consolid consolidation issue. So that what you were alluding to, that if we want to use maybe the long-term uh, transportation effectively, we we need to to do consolidation. So all of all of those problems can yes they can be connected together. It's okay. it, 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 it's clear that they can be connected. Okay, thank you. And now let me recall the questions. If anybody is interested to ask anything, uh, just uh, unmute yourself and ask. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. We hear you well. Please go ahead. Okay, perfect. I have a practical question. If I have the um, time-dependent, departure time-dependent distant matrix for all customers, but if I don't have the underlying road network or the paths, can I still uh, exploit this algorithm? Uh... But if you have, you say, if I have the the, the time dependent, uh, the time dependent matrix for all the customers. If if you have this, uh, what I've been what I've been alluding to is that in the in the traditional approach for, for time dependent VRP, what would be done? is that some path would be identified and then the time dependent function to go from customer I to customer J would be constructed just for that path. If you have, if you have a matrix where you have, it's been constructed accounting for changes in paths between the two customers, then you, you don't need to go through all the machinery that I have developed. The reason why we're using the road network is that, you should, is that the model that we have for time dependency is not really a path model, the real one in practice. If you, if you collect data, on, uh, on a city, if you take empirical data on a city, what you will be able to get is speed profiles on a, 
on a street segment by street segment basis. And, uh, and, and the idea here is to make the connection between this, uh, I would say this aggregate representation of time, depend time dependency with the fact that we need to connect customers. But I if, understand that. But, but, but if you have, if, if yourself, you would have a, for some, through some way, you would have the real, the real uh, travel time uh, function between customers, then you just, you can just, uh, you can just apply, I would say the second part of the, uh, of the method. And, and basically this is what we do. In fact, we spend a lot of time at the beginning of the algorithm to construct this dominant shortest path structure. And the dominant shortest path structure allows us to construct implicitly a customer to customer travel uh, time dependent travel time function. Uh, this, this means, uh, if I understand correctly, the first part creates these uh, time dependent uh, travel time function. And in the second part, uh, the cross exchange actually exchanging uh, the, the routes, the, the customers within yeah, the yeah. route, so you, is not you the can, nodes that are exchanged. You, you can, you can, you can know we're exchanging, uh, you're exchanging part of the delivery route. So we're exchanging uh, nodes and arcs in there. But uh, between routes, but 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 basically, what happens? It's it's a you can see this as a two-stage process. The first stage process is really constructing the basic data structure that you need to be able to construct the routes, and then the second Thank part is really the optimization of the routes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Michelle. It is really clear. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? If not, thank you very much. It was quite long today, so apologies for technical problems. And I, I sincerely apologize for this uh, internet internet failure. No, this has been uh, happening to me on a regular basis for the last uh, few weeks. I've been trying to to discuss this with my internet provider. And they tell me that everything is fine, except that maybe I should uh, I should be renting a new router from them for uh, obviously 1,000 Maravillis <laughs> per month. I am pretty sure that it wasn't a message routing problem because that would be really nasty. Yeah. Because okay, so... Specific field. Thank I had one last for your technical, uh, part, uh, practical question. Um, I don't want to delay everyone. Michelle, is this uh, algorithm available in yeah. some repository like GitHub or uh, GitHub? The, I don't think the, uh, you can get the, the paper about this, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't think we have made the, the algorithm. Oh, anyway, I, think I, think like I, I think you could maybe contact, uh, if you were to maybe contacting uh, Ma, Mira, maybe you could get you could get the algorithm from her, but it's not been distributed widely. Sure, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, see you in uh, two weeks. Um, we will have a talk by, uh, by Christophe Dürer from uh, Paris, and he will speak about three models for scheduling under explorable uncertainty, right? So it was nice to have you uh, on side and uh, see you in two weeks. Yeah. Bye -bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.